one day, back in the late 90s, I was living in New York. It was the morning. I was standing in my kitchen, looking out over the backyard, the swimming pool, the rose gardens, and my husband walked in. I turned around and he said to me, I'm in love with another woman. And in that moment, it was as if everything stood still. But actually, it was me. It was me that stood still and the world was spinning. And I thought to myself, who am I? Where am I? Who am I listening to? Not me. And that thought changed my life. Now, obviously the divorce changed my life, but that's a whole nother story. That thought of who am I listening to really changed my life. It set me on a search because the truth is he said, I'm in love with her, her meant I knew her and I did, but I was too busy to pay attention, to listen to that own little nagging voice going, something's wrong, something's wrong. I was too busy. I had two small children. I was running in and out of New York city. I had contracts for my jewelry with Eileen Fisher stores co-op nursery school i was just too busy running a household all those many things to stop and really pay attention to my life and so that thought sent me on a search 12 nine months into the process going through divorce i was still miserable i was trying all kinds of mental therapy therapist children's therapist social therapist couple therapist but i was still crying i was still depressed i was still angry having anxiety attacks and then right before my 40th birthday, a friend said, Hey, Tara, I met these twins. One's an astrologer and one's a spiritual counselor. He said, let's go. It's your birthday. She said, I'm going to the astrologer. I said, I'm going to the spiritual counselor. I had no idea what that meant, but I knew I needed help. And so I did. I went, I met Catherine. We talked, we did some breathing. She did some hands-on stuff. And then I left, I got back in my car and in the silence of my car, I heard you're going to be okay. And in that moment, right then I said, whatever that was, whatever I just heard, I was going to follow. And I promised myself, I was not only going to help my children survive, but also to thrive. And so I began to follow that voice, which was my spirit guiding me and talking to me. I began working more and more with Catherine. And then I found out you can learn some of these techniques to practice for yourself like Reiki. And so I did. I started learning and learning everything I could. And I started working with my children, working with the Reiki energy at night. We just run all energy. They'd be reading, we'd be reading books and they'd just be so loving. My son would just look at me. I love you, mama. And we were just like bonding. And I started to notice how much better they were doing. They weren't acting out. We were getting along and I started to notice how much better I was doing. I was happier. In fact, my kids even remember the first time I laughed again. So I began to notice so many amazing effects helping me to start my life again, helping me to step out on my own, to move through divorce, to start raising my children. And to start figuring out who I was once again, I ended up getting a job, an amazing job working with jewelry designer, doing jewelry, creating more and more of what I love to do. And I continued working with Catherine and I continued gaining the tools and the techniques on intuition, on Reiki energy, on how to work with crystals, how to add these things into a healing session. And so then I began to also teach Reiki. I began to, my side hustle, work with clients, sell my jewelry, still doing that. And all of this created a healing art studio for me. And now it was hard. It was really hard. It was hard being a single mom, living in New York, no family nearby, but I did it. I persevered. I learned so much. My side hustle has now turned into my full-time job, my passion, my purpose to help others learn about their own spirit, to be able to stand up for themselves. That was huge. Raised in the South, women didn't do it. That was really huge for me. 
and go on to do amazing things with their life as they move through the transitions that life often brings. So yes, very grateful in the long run for all the lessons I learned and the ability to then turn that into my own purpose. Yes, I still make jewelry, I'm still creative, but this is my purpose, helping others to learn about their spirit through the tools and techniques to empower them to make the transitions and the shifts that they need. To your spirit, namaste.